Hi, and welcome to this side event focusing on the art of making use of great talent. Both employees, but also, also entrepreneurs. My name is Regina Summer, and I'm the Director for Strategic Partnerships and Policy at CISP, the Swedish Incubators and Science Parks. Today's session will focus on talent. And this is something that has been discussed during Sweden Innovation Days, the two last days. It is a challenge. We all need talent, both for the northern regions that are building like a new society, but also, you know, researchers. Uh, we also need in, within the industry and startups need talent to become scale ups. This session today will focus, focus on talent, but it will specifically focus on how two great initiatives were started almost a year ago here in Sweden, focusing on helping Ukrainians. I'm in the studio today with Fredrik Hillelson, CEO and founder of uh, Novare Human Capital, and Anna Wiklan, the director uh, here in Sweden for, for Google. Very welcome, both of you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Fredrik, uh, you initiated the, uh, the skill shift initiative here in Sweden several years ago during the, the pandemic, and this has now developed to what we call the Ukrainian, Pro Ukrainian Professional Support Center. Anna? Google Sweden initiated a, 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 a kind of a program for entrepreneurship and startups also almost a year ago. We would like to hear more about this skill shift uh, initiative that started the whole thing uh, and that it's called the Beredskapslyftet in, in, in Swedish. Please, uh, please Fredrik. No, I mean, when the pandemic struck us all in the March 2020, we took a very quick an initiative where we started with a small pilot that then turned out that we actually reskilled 300 flight attendants from the Scandinavian company SAS. So that was the start of Beredskapslyftet. And since then we have worked a lot to, to support the society here in Sweden. Can I just add one thing regarding Beredskapslyftet? Because if I heard correctly, that was something that, you know, it was an idea and 24 hours later, you were working on it. Yeah, no, no. Is that correct? I'm, I'm ex-military, so I, sometimes it's good to be, be, be quick. <laughs> no, but actually, I mean, I got the, a call from from the board a board member of SAS, mm. and he said, "Fred, we are laying off thousands of, of people, and they are good people. Can we do something for them regarding the pandemic? Did we ask the hospitals? Did we ask the politicians? No, we just we did it. But we started with a pilot, 30 people, and then it turned out to, to become 300 people, and they are really, really attractive." by the hospitals to support in the pandemic. So it was a good start. Great start, I would Thank say. You. And you got some kind of private funding there in it directly, yeah, I think right? Man, we, we, got man, we got 1 million, 100,000 euros right away. Yeah. But the good thing is that we then got calls from Poland, Australia, United States, they all wanted to talk about us, how we did with the flight attendants. So we had several discussions. Mm but there were too many lawyers involved on their side. So the, the airlines in these countries, they never went, they, di they didn't do what we did. Mm. But we are a small country. Yeah. And this has now, the last year, it has developed to a new initiative, Ukrainian Professional Support Center. Please yeah. tell us more about that. No, I mean, when the war struck here in March, February, March, I mean, a lot of people said, we need to go down to the Ukraine. And we said, no, we are not going down to the Ukraine because there are other, organizations that are more suitable for that. But then we decided, we need, I mean, I'm a recruiter, so then we decided together with three competitors, colleagues, that we should do something. So we started a small pilot again with the job center, and during the summer we actually recruited out about 100 Ukrainians into different co companies. In parallel, we also started schools, both, both in Sweden and in Finland, for Ukrainian kids. So we, all in all, about 500 kids have been participating in temporary schools. But the good thing with this job center and the pilot is that it worked out very well. And we made it very, very simple, because what we did is that we said 50% Swedes and 50% Ukrainians. 
the Swedes, we fix the jobs, the Ukrainians, they fix the Ukrainians. So after this summer, we got kind of bold and then we applied for money from the EU and we actually got like 2 million euros. So today we have about 25 Ukra Ukrainian Swedes working with this. And we have, I mean, I will come back to the results or what we have, yeah. what we're about to do, yeah. Amazing, amazing. And Anna, Google Sweden also was quite fast in, in creating an initiative for these Ukrainians, talented Ukrainians that, that had to unfortunately flee their country, but came to Sweden and needed support. What did you do? Yeah, exactly. So we have for several, several years um, been having programs for upskilling or reskilling individuals uh, that is called Digital Academy. So we've done that since 2015. Uh, but then uh, last year we saw, you know, with the number of Ukrainians coming to Sweden, uh, we also wanted to see what we could do to, to provide support and help. Uh, and that's where we decided to launch an incubator program for, for female entrepreneurs from Ukraine. So uh, we kicked that off and uh, it was a six week program where 50 entrepreneurs participated out of, I, it was more than 200 uh, applicants. Uh, and they went through this uh, program where it was a combination of uh, both like uh, virtual sessions, like educational sessions, but it was also a lot about the networking uh, among those, but also each uh, entrepreneur also got uh, a mentor. So there was the combination of, of, of both. And um, uh, the whole education was done in Ukrainian so that, you know, the, the barriers to enter was very low. Um, and and uh, uh, the, the different topics uh, that, that they learned was both connected to, you know, regulation topics, uh, more connected to how, how can you start a business in Sweden, but it was also like how, how can you sort out financing, mm. uh, how, how do you get the digital skills needed and so forth. So, so, so that was the that was the program, uh, and uh, it was really amazing to to well meet all of these like brave, courageous, really driven women, um, and see how they took on this program. But also in that networking and the community that was built with with also the mentors uh, and what that meant to them. So uh, they graduated in uh, in December last year. Mm -hmm. Two fantastic initiatives. I'm quite curious here. How long had these Ukrainians been in Sweden? I mean, it must have been for some weeks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, some weeks. I mean, I think initially I started to meet some women mm -hmm. and they were always sitting with one or two child next to them, yeah. children. Mm -hmm. And then we thought that's why we need in parallel to help them with schooling for the kids, yeah. because without schooling. But at the same time, in Sweden today, 80% of, of the Ukrainian kids today are in the Swedish school. Yeah. So the Swedish school system have really done a tremendous job in getting them into schools. Both two great initiatives here, but I'm guessing that it was not all a smooth ride. So what, any challenges that you faced there in the beginning or, or that you still have? No, but I think, as I said initially, I mean, if you do a pilot yep. with a small number of people and if you fail, it's not a disaster. Mm -hmm. But if you do it, sometimes I think one challenge is that we over, we make it too complicated, too many analyses, too many, too much talk. Just get, get it going. And if, if it doesn't work out, be open and say, oh, we, we have to make some changes. So I think action is more important than to, to like make it too, too complicated. Mm. So I really don't see that much of challenges. No, it was I only all see smooth solutions. ride. Pardon? No, all, all, uh, everything was a smooth no. ride in honor. Yeah, but I mean, the school, I mean, yeah. it took us three years, yeah. three weeks to yeah. set up a school for 150 yeah. children. We recruited 10 Ukrainian teachers. We got funding from the business. Yeah. The society, and I have a respect for that, the society's uh, processes are longer. So in a pandemic, in this kind of crisis, business people and, and volunteers are quicker. Yeah. And, but I don't criticize them because that's how their systems are working. Mm. Mm. And, and uh, Anna, any challenges that you faced for these entrepreneurs? 
I think that the main thing that, that we realized was um, early on that it was difficult for them to, to know where to go to find the information about like regulations or the Swedish laws and like how they should try to figure things out. Uh, some of these were entrepreneurs already like in Ukraine when they oh. came and some, some were not and, and this is their first like entrepreneurial uh, trip they're on. Uh, but, but one thing that, that was a particular challenge for, for them is since they don't have uh, like Swedish social security numbers. Uh, it was difficult. They didn't have the bank ID, and, and it was hard for them to open bank accounts in Sweden, which of course they need if they are to start a company. So that type of, of barriers is something uh, that, that we could like, you know, get them the right context and try to sort out. And I think that's one of those things that, that would be good if we could find ways to like, lower those barriers to make it easier for for them when they when they come here. That's uh, it's actually an interesting perspective because we are super proud that we're so digital. I mean, we even you know do our taxes on our cell phone more or less, and and this can actually become a, a struggle when people come here. Where are all the banks? Where are all the post offices? So everything is digital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good, but in this way, well, it was kind of a, of a challenge. I, I understand how to find the support. Uh, any surprises? along the way, both, I mean, positive or...? No, I, I mean, today there are about 50,000 Ukrainians in Sweden, whereof 50% are grow adults. 84% of them are women. 70% mm. of them have a university degree. 60% of them are speaking English. Today, 34% of them are working in Sweden. Initially, I felt that we need to help them. I mean, it's terrible. I feel sorry for them. But I've realized the more I know them that, I mean, they are a great talent pool. Mm. So I think when we start to look at them as, as great talents, then you shift the perspective because when we are recruiting and we can offer this to, to Swedish cust uh, companies free of charge, I mean, they have high demands. So they expect good people. Mm. So, so I think that was one thing. I mean, they are great talents. They are, dedicated, hard-working people. Mm. I really admire them. Mm. Yeah, great. Yeah, if I can build on that, I think I, I very much agree. And I think that that was like one of the most amazing things early on, just to like meet them and, and their drive and their courage. Uh, that, that was something that really stood out. They do not want to you know, see themselves as victims or to be treated like that. Uh, and and uh, they have, have so much competence. So I, I really agree with what you say, that that's the important thing to, to, to recognize in this situation, uh, that they, they're such great talent and uh, it's, it's just... Um, a privilege uh, for Swedish companies uh, to, to get to know them, to recruit them, but also for us to work with them and see them you know, flourish and, and build their companies here. And, uh, and one other thing is that, I mean, since there is a very positive flow about, about Ukrainians and their situation, it has been very easy for us to recruit Ukrainians and skip the language level that you need to speak Swedish. So a lot of jobs, they say, it's okay with, with to, to, to talk English. And I hope that the, the, this positive flow of Ukrainians will mean that other foreigners coming to our country, if they speak English, we can get them a job. Because we focus too much on about CV, how you should learn the systems, get them into job, and then they learn the local language. I think go, that goes for all countries that are listening now. Mm. Just that, get them into a job. And that's very interesting hearing from a recruitment company, one of the largest uh, in, in, in Sweden. Uh, that's so <laughs> a little bit dangerous. Don't take me this maybe on uh, every word here, but it's good. Good. Just do things. Have you seen any results? Anna, you start. Yeah, we have. We actually uh, we just uh, concluded like a survey among uh, all of the entrepreneurs. 
uh, and we could see that 90% of them said that they did learn new skills through the, the program that they could use now when they are um, building their companies. And also, uh, over 30% said that their revenues have increased since the ones that had had their companies before uh, since the program. So you could really, it, it's great to see that it actually also helps. And I think um, many of them that I've talked to I mean, they're determined to continue to build their, their companies, but they also want to then bring that back to Ukraine once, hopefully, in not too long, this horrible war is over and they want to be part of like contributing to building up Ukraine again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Frederick. EU that gave us the 2 million euros, they said that you need to recruit at least 400 Ukrainians before September of this year and train 800. So today, so that, that is like our goal. And I think today we're up around 150 and we are in March. So, so, but we will fix this. And if we don't fix it, we will get criticized. And I welcome that because that's a good challenge. No. Yeah. And then you can improve and you do it again and you Absolutely. do it better. And yeah, that, that's the way we have to work. And that's, I think, that's a little bit of the innovation, innovating culture in Sweden. You, you try out things and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but you can always, you know, redo and that's fine. Uh, and I love that about, about Sweden. What would you see as the next step focusing on, on talent attraction and, and keeping foreign talents in Sweden, both attracting and, and keeping, keeping them here? Frederick. I mean, for the Ukrainians, as Anna said, we, we hope the war will end soon. Yeah. And, and, um, but then I think, I mean, to me, with these attract talents, th no matter if it's Ukrainians or from Somalia or Afghanistan or Sweden, to me, it's all about leadership. I mean, if you're a good, progressive employer, you will always be able to keep your talents. But if you are pretty lousy and conservative, you will have problems in the future because the new generations, they are much more demanding as me as a 60-year-old guy. Mm -hmm. Anna. What would yeah. you see? The next step, focusing on talent from Google Sweden's perspective. Yeah, I think that you know we want to continue. Th this was like the first incubator program that, that we did for Ukrainians uh, the year before we did it, but for for uh, Swedish female entrepreneurs. But I think that. Uh, we have done this together with others, with partners. Uh, we were partners in this uh, uh, and many others. And I think that uh, to continue to, to, uh, to support, uh, well, Ukrainians, first of all, when they come here, but also to, to continue to like, build talent, it is about collaborations. It's, it's not something that we would do or can do on our own. Then it's not as successful. So it's really about like, finding these collaborations, both with other private companies, but also with, with uh, uh, other like, public companies, uh, so that we really do that together. I think that, that's what's needed also in the future. Mm. May, may I add one thing? I mean, when it comes to NGOs that have had a crucial role in helping Ukrainians, we will, for instance, now in April, we will together with Save the Children and uh, a, a child, children organization called Bris, we will actually do a, a pilot again for three months, like a Ukrainian hotline, where Ukrainians can call into a number, Ukrainians will answer about problems with bank ID, landlords and bad employers. So we will test that because my experience is that the Ukrainians are very proud. They don't go to authorities because in their home country, the authorities are maybe not that good. So, so, but if it, so we will do a pilot again and see like a Ukrainian hotline and see what, what comes out of that. Mm. Great. Mm. So what I'm hearing here is that language doesn't need to be uh, some kind of barrier I mean, this, the, a lot of them speak, speak English and, and they have, it has been... Uh, uh, I mean, in Sweden, people are very, very good at English. I think everyone in Sweden speaks English more or less, so yeah, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. But any recommendations to participants? We have almost 100 countries watching us, uh, both participants in Sweden and from, um, you know, in other countries. Uh, recommendations, how, ca how can they start uh, initiatives like this? And 
Don't make it too complicated. I mean, we started with three competitors that now are colleagues, partners in the first thing. I mean, go together. We have worked a lot with NGOs because, I mean, it, it's not my company's idea. This is something above what I'm doing. I think that is one, one, one recommendation. And then we never criticize politicians, authorities, uh, cities. We just try to be a positive force why we should cooperate with everyone. So th I think that don't, don't, don't fight with the politicians. I mean, they are trying to do their best. I think um, uh, I very much agree with like, don't try to make it too complicated uh, and, and n not too big of a thing from the start. Like start smaller and then see what works and then, and then you can build from there. The pilot method. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, but it, it's, it's really good. Uh, and also like the, the program we did, six weeks. You don't need to have it for like three, six months. Like start with that and then you can build from there. And then I think this whole collaboration piece and doing it together. I thought it was also amazing to see like when we had launched this and, and um, and got some some uh, great noise about it. Um, uh, there are so many companies that also reached out, also wanting to help and lean in. Uh, so I think that that's that's the other like very positive reflection from this. Like there are so many that want to help but don't perhaps know how to start. Uh, but if you start something and communicate around it, you will get others that also wants to help out. But I also think it's important that you do it in a professional way yeah. because you need to have stamina. Yeah. I mean, we are committed yeah. to recruit 400 Ukrainians up until September. Mm. I mean, the risk if you're a volunteer, me as a private person, is that I do it for two weeks and then I run out of money or energy or whatever, and then it drops. And that is a bad mistake and it, 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 it's not good at all. So you need to have, you need to run it as an enterprise where you have to commit to targets. Yeah, yeah. I have a clear project with clear goals. Yeah. Any last comments, Anna? Um, no, I think I just want to like re-emphasize if we talk about like Ukrainians now and and uh, you know the the drive and the courage. Uh, uh, I think has has just been really amazing. So, uh, independent uh, if it is from Ukraine or elsewhere, from as you said, Frederick, like uh, just this idea about like talent can come from anywhere. Like the different experiences that people uh, come with, both from professional lives, but also as people. That diversity is such an interesting part of the mix, and that's what what's also building great companies. So I think that that having that open mindset. Um, I think is uh, key. Mm. Frederick, no, last think, words. In the past, I think we in the Swedish business has had a tendency to criticize the governments and the authorities, and we pay high taxes. The pandemic showed us that we as business people need to involve ourselves and work together with the authorities. And there, I think we need to work more together in order to break all the silos that we have in a complex society. Thank you both of you very much for joining Thank us you. today and Thank sharing you. these great examples. And I, I have so many takeaways from, from, from this session. I, I've noted so many things here, but I mean, apparently one thing that is quite obvious is just walk the talk. Something needed to be done and organizations moved fast. And sometimes the industry or NGOs move faster than our government. But I think, like Frederick say, they're doing the best they can. And there are, it's different processes that we all have to, to work with. I hope this session inspires you to, for doing similar uh, initiatives in your countries, regardless of, uh, regardless of where these talents come from. But what I think is quite striking and, and amazing with the Swedish whole ecosystem is that when you need to get things done, you have competitors coming together with a joint mission to get shit done. The expression we used last year during Sweden Innovation Days, we need to walk the talk, we need to get shit done, and then you have these great initiatives that create amazing results. I have to also say, just by ending this session, that talent and entrepreneurs are everywhere, but opportunity is not. 
I hope this inspires you and thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>